first sentence? I have. I have a plaza of space. If I participated, participated in a wall of four, a plaza in person and a four virtually during COVID, my mom has been a speaker and nurses covers in the past. You're doing really great. How about we continue? I was diagnosed by an SLP when I was just three years old. I was born with hearing loss as well, and it took a while for my parents to learn that my speech issues had nothing to do with my hearing loss. They were totally separate. <laughs> One did not affect the other. I got hearing aids when I was just 10 months old. I got a talker when I was just five. I also have an FM system that I bring to school as well. My mom jokes that she sends me to school with thousands of dollars of technology. It's so funny. I'm always careful to bring everything home each weekday. Learning how to use my talker, my AAC, was hard. When I was 12, I made the decision to only use it in the classroom to help me interact. I decided not to use it when I was participating in leisure activities with my friends because my verbal speech was coming along. And so this year was pretty great because why? Do you still need your AAC? We graduated out of that because um, verbal has really come a long way and it's, um, it's amazing. Yeah. So we no longer need the AAC. We donated it to the school. Um, my biggest challenge is reading. It's hard to read when you have issues pronouncing words. If you can't say a word, it's also hard to remember how to spell it. I practice words that are hard over and over again. Eventually, my tongue and my teeth and my jaw know just what to do. One of my greatest accomplishments was learning how to speak in public. I've given class speeches and I've made a group presentations in front of my peers. I was nervous, but I got through it. The last thing that I want to uh, the last thing I want to say with tons of speech therapy and social interaction, it does get better. My confidence is much better now and I'm not afraid to enter a conversation or start a conversation. I've come a long way with the help and support of what my mom calls a village. So much more conversational, much easier initiating conversations. And I have to say like Brody has found a lot of workarounds when it comes to social interaction. He has you have hand, his hand, secret handshakes that he does with all of his friends and they're all different. I don't know how he remembers them, but it's great when I see them in the schoolyard in the morning and drop off and they do these like crazy handshakes. This is the first year that Greenfield is not going to recommend that Brody goes to another school that has a specialized uh, secluded program because next year is going to be his last year at Greenfield and it would be silly just to like take him out of that groove during you know eighth grade and so high school is the next challenge for us um not really sure what's going what that picture looks like so we're seeing we're going to take it to one day at a time and and we'll see um but it's just been it's been hard but it it does get easier the relationships that he has built with his buddies is deep I uh, remember they had a trip to a farm in first grade and Brody was like sliding down a hill and Miles just picked him right up and brought him in. And like that metaphor um, sees itself in other scenarios, metaphorically speaking, that is, it's just um, the relationships he has built with his peers are deep because it's a school that's K through eight. So this is where Michelle comes in. Every year, Michelle DeBoer, who's here, she addresses the, the new class every single year. And she goes, not only she not only does she educate the kids, but also the teachers, because they never heard the word apraxia, right? Yes. So every single year she goes in, she answers questions, she uh, normalizes everything, and it's never a big deal. Um, and, you know, when Birdie had the talker, I think she let the other kids use the talker when he was early childhood. Um, and they would pass it around and use it. And, and also the FM system, they would pass it around and use it. I was thinking about Wendy's question to Brody about what he has taught his teachers. And and I I think that I can share what I've learned. So you have taught me how to see things from a totally different perspective. So I have... 
It means that you've taught me how to, if you're having trouble with something or something is really hard, we come up with a way to figure it out. And so at the start of each year, I also, I make this um, 12 to 15 page uh, get to know Brody PDF that I lovingly send to all the new teachers. And it's very specific. Um, uh, and uh, it's great. It's great because every year I go back to the same document and lately I've been like, oh, we don't need this anymore. So yeah. it's uh, it's a real refresher for me as to progress that's been made. But I would say the other thing, the last thing I would tell parents is that when children progress, um, there's another modality of communication that comes about, which is spelling. So there are two kids in Bernie's class, Landon and London. If I can't understand no, a, a, a proper I name, I you spell it out for me, right? Yes. And that wasn't possible when he was younger. I honestly, I wouldn't, I would tell my past self not to work, stress out so much and worry so much and build your village and trust the professionals and trust people. Um, I had a trouble because uh, I'm a control freak at heart. Mm -hmm. um, I had some trouble letting go of that and just let people like Wendy and, and like Nancy and Michelle really shine and do their job. Um, and, and, ask for help. I mean, that's the biggest thing for people that are just starting out this trajectory. It's hard and it's emotional, but I asked for help. And um, that was, that really made a big difference and put things in perspective. You know, they're walking through the, uh, walking through Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is very sobering and it gives you a perspective all on challenges that families face and so not that a proxy of speech you know is here and something else is here but it does make you understand that um there are families that are truly like hurting um and this is something that we can do our best and and try our hardest and overcome in in the long run and so keep your perspective is something that i would say to parents just starting out and go to the national conference on apraxia uh, because you will find your tribe there and you will be able to make instant friendships with other people uh, your age and talk about stories and uh, I went maybe 10 years ago and I'm still friends with with three other women that I made there we 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 communicate um we text each other and it's, there's just something about something really comforting about not you know being alone in this whole thing so definitely going to that national conference was was life changing is it hard or easy to talk to your friends now it's easy now was it always easy Ah, no. <laughs> Dive in. Learn everything there is to know about apraxia, but don't let it consume you to the point of obsession and don't get like white knuckled about it. Knowledge is power. And I think Apraxia Kids um, has done a great job over the years in improving the website and giving us parents tools that we can use. This year in particular, I was really impressed with a lot of information that came out about insurance coverage rights in particular states. Um, I think that's really wonderful. It's a subject that's really been uh, an albatross on, on many parents' necks. So thank you for that, Amy, and thank your staff. But um, yeah, so uh, I, I think that's a wrap. You want to say anything to close? You want to thank anybody here? You want to say? Also, parents, if you're listening to this, look into biofeedback because that's the next big thing in technology with speech. I highly recommend looking into that. It actually um, puts his voice into a visual on the computer when he's doing remote therapy so we can hit targets because his voice, you can actually see his voice yeah. on the screen. Yeah. How cool is that? And so there are wonderful things coming out in technology, um, but always, always, here's the last thing I'm going to say. It gets down to what motivates your kid. Like you mentioned, you brought up um, Cars Beth. 
Um, yes, because... So now, like, he knows all of the races. He knows all of the drivers. Not that that is applicable, but daily life. I know it was now. Okay. We got Master Sally, Pillis. Max Verstappen. Pillis. Lewis. You so watch us. Lavanos. Adam Prasley. Lois Rade. Azo Abad. Azo Khan. This is keep going. Now you may say that's not really how useful is that, but that's not that's not what the story is about. The story is about practicing and trying and learning and reaching those goals, even if they are small goals. 